Okay. I'll, I'll try to answer all your questions. All right. I'm without a chair, so I guess I'm going to... Okay, you want a chair? Let me get you a chair. Oh, okay, thanks. Let me get you. I got you. Oh, hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, let's we'll see. Give me one more chair. Sure. Go ahead, join us. Thank you. Hold up a chair. Hello. BBC Radio. Could we have five minutes with you at the end of this? Uh... Sure. We'll see Doing what? this just because we're so limited on time sure. as it is right yeah. now. All right, thank you. We well, you, come. You can come here. We'll walk and come listen. You can pull up your chair as well. Senator, all right. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Logical first question, easy one. What do you think of uh, Senator Obama's choice of Senator Biden as vice president candidate? You know, I think it's a great choice. Um, Senator Biden uh, is a crime fighter. He's uh, been good with law enforcement uh, for a long time. After the Violence Against Women's Act, uh, I have known. Joe Biden and worked with him closely for a number of years, and I admire what he's done for law enforcement to keep our streets and communities safe here at home. Uh, Joe Biden also is the foremost expert in the nation in terms of foreign policy, and that's why you get uh, statements from people like uh, Dick Luger and Chuck Hagel, great friends of mine, Republicans, who uh, uh, applaud the choice of Joe Biden as a uh, vice presidential uh, nominee. So I think uh, it is a great choice. I think uh, Senator Obama. Uh, showed uh, great judgment in uh, reaching out and uh, getting someone like Joe Biden to be part of the ticket. Yeah. You've made a point in recent days of talking about the importance of Western issues and how there's perhaps you know a shift a bit in terms of the prominence that those issues are getting in the Democratic Party. Can I ask you to address that um, again now as we sort of go into it? We know, for example, with Joe Biden, you know more and more pieces are falling into place. So how does that actually? play out in terms of what those Western issues are and what evidence there is that they're actually more prominent for the Democratic Party. Okay. The, the road uh, to the White House will lead through the West and, and through Colorado. You know, the fact that uh, we are a battleground state uh, tells you that we're different this year than uh, ever before in any presidential year. And the fact that the convention is being held here in the grandeur of the Rocky Mountains tells you that the West is important. So. What will come out of this convention and uh, what will be a part of what our nominees care about so much is uh, the fact that uh, the West is uh, an area that has its unique set of issues and uh, they are going to be addressed. There will be a sensitivity from the Obama administration to the fact that uh, so much of our lands are owned in federal uh, ownership. Thirty-three percent of my state is owned by the federal government. Uh, I know the Obama-Biden administration will be sensitive to those issues. I know the importance of water. Water is the lifeblood of our communities in the West. You only understand that when you uh, live in an arid state and you've been involved in all the fights of the compacts. That's why I'm displeased with uh, Senator McCain and his statement on opening up the Colorado River compacts. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm pleased that um, Senator Obama's position will be that the compacts are sacrosanct and we need to respect the states. So uh, I think you're going to have uh, a uh, Obama-Biden White House which ultimately will be determined here in the West, and I think you're going to have great sensitivity to the issues that are of particular concern to us here in the West. I'd like to follow up on that because you've been quite um, the expert on oil shell issues and, and related issues in energy. What would you like to see this party do regarding energy and energy policy? Yeah, we need to take the moonshot on energy. Uh, you know, for 30 years, it's uh, something that the American leadership has failed us, frankly, on both sides of the aisle. And uh, they happened at this point in the same way John Kennedy get, said, we're not going to let the Russians get ahead of us. And so instead of it taking 10 years to get a man on the move, we got him in nine. Same kind of vision and uh, courage that uh, we had from Franklin Roosevelt. He said, we're going to end the war. We're going to develop a bomb that will uh, end the war. And the Manhattan Project was able to do that. That's what's going to happen uh, again here uh, with an Obama-Biden administration. And we're going to take the big issues of our world, uh, the issue of Iraq, and we're going to find a new way forward that will bring greater peace to the world. We're going to take the issue of energy. We're going to take that moonshot on energy. We're going to take the very complex and difficult issue of health care, and we're going to finally resolve the issue. And uh, that, was, that is what has been missing uh, the last seven years, is that there has been a failure of leadership to address those issues that are so fundamental to the security of the American people as a nation and as people. And uh, that's why I'm so excited about this ticket. Let's go back to the water rights. Why should voters be so concerned about the renegotiation of the water rights? For some voters, it might be good in the U.S. I know for Colorado voters, you're saying that it's not good. Can you explain a little bit further? Yeah. 
it's, it's a million acre feet of water uh, for us here in Colorado that uh, we neg negotiated for uh, a long time ago that we have the right to develop besides the water that we developed from the Colorado River. And it's uh, sheer folly for anybody to uh, make a, a statement that, that we ought to reopen up uh, the compact because whose water right is it that would be placed on the table for renegotiation? Because water, once we have undeveloped, of course, not Phoenix or Arizona, right. not yeah. uh, uh, Nevada, they already have their share. And so for us, when people start messing around with our compacts, Republicans, independents, Democrats alike all stand up and say what is truly what we will be saying is don't mess around with our compacts, don't mess around with our water. And speaking of water, um, there's a lot of oil drilling going on the western slope. A couple of weeks ago, the federal government auctioned off land for more, more oil drilling on the, especially the Rome Plateau and stuff. A lot of the drills are being placed near the rivers. There's a big concern on the communities about contamination in the rivers. How is that being regulated? Okay, well, what we need to do is to make sure that as our public lands are being used for natural resource extraction, including oil and gas, that we have a thoughtful and responsible approach to that development. I, you know, I support the development, but I don't support it at the sacrifice of our environment. You know, for us in Colorado, the sustainability of our economy uh, really is based on uh, the grandeur of our mountains and our public lands. And uh, I don't believe that uh, we ought to let the federal government run roughshod over Colorado and its wishes to maintain uh, that sustainability. And in fact, that's what's been happening under the Bush-Cheney administration with respect to oil and gas development. You know, the Colorado and many parts of the West are essentially being run roughshod uh, by, the, by the federal government, and, and that has to end. Now, it doesn't mean we can't have development and we won't have development. Uh, we have to have a comprehensive energy plan, part of which includes drilling and exploration, both inland and offshore. Uh, but uh, we need to do it in a thoughtful way so that uh, we don't destroy the sustainability of our planet along the way. Can I follow up on energy? I mean, as you know, energy legislation is incredibly complicated to pass. You know, assuming Senator Obama wins the White House, how willing do you think his administration and Democrats in general are going to be to spend kind of that early political capital on that issue, given that there's all these other things you're going to have to deal with the economy, Iraq, et cetera? I mean, do you still see that as being one of the sort of early day priorities for the party? I think it'll be one of the hundred day priorities of the party that we get it done because on the issue of energy, we know what we have to do. We know what we have to do with uh, greater efficiencies, what we have to do with advanced uh, biofuels, what we have to do with advanced uh, battery technologies and advanced vehicles. We know the answers. We know how we can capture the power of the sun. You know, here in Colorado, just a few days ago, ago XL said we're going to build a 200 megawatt solar power plant. That's a huge power plant. We're going to take 800 megawatts of wind and we're going to harness wind to that extent. When you have that kind of change taking place, we know exactly what we have to do. We just need to have a federal government uh, and a White House that is going to be supportive of 100 percent of those efforts. And that's why the smooth shot that we need to take is something which is not terribly complicated. It's doable. It's just a question of whether we have the willingness to do it. How do you see the climate issue? Do you see that being as part of that moonshot, or is that something that's going to have to come down the road as sort of um, separate legislation? You know, I don't know whether it will be brought together in one piece of legislation or whether we'll have uh, two pieces of legislation, one that deals with a comprehensive energy package and one that deals with uh, global warming and carbon emissions. Uh, the, the carbon emissions uh, formula for global warming, frankly, is more complex, I think, than just dealing with the straightforward policies that we have to do on uh, renewable energy, uh, on efficiency, and a whole host of things that the National Renewable Energy Lab here in Colorado could give us a map today on exactly what we have to do to get rid of our dependence on foreign oil. Thank you all. Thank you, Senator. Hey, thank you, Senator. Thank, thank you. you.